On this video, I'll be sharing with you some incredible restaurants in Japan. Yes, I went where the locals eat, and it was absolutely incredible. However, I also became a victim of the worst tourist trap there is. You're gonna be shocked on how much money I paid and the quality of steaks. But first, when you go to Japan, you gotta have Wagyu beef. And the best restaurants for this are the ones that are not fancy. Take, for example, this very first one that we're going to. You can't even tell that it's a restaurant. You gotta go up on some sketchy stairs, so I was hoping for the best. Now this is Yakiniko. Notice that there's no fancy presentation here. And you get to cook your own beef. And when you first put it, it will stick to the grill grate. Once it's ready, you will release. But the wonderful thing about Yakiniko is the experience. Being able to cook the meat to your liking, and most importantly, having a great time doing it. Now I want you to notice one thing. It is being cooked on real charcoal. If you are looking for a Yakiniko restaurant, charcoal should be a priority on your list. Enough talking, let's eat. Mm. Mmm, I got some nice kimchi radish here as well. Oh, it looks phenomenal. Mm. This radish right here breaks up the fattiness. What a nice meal. That's what I'm talking about, everybody. Nice and juicy. Gotta render that fat, you know what I mean? If you render that fat, it's just gonna taste a lot better. And I love that everybody gets to cook their own beef. I get a break. I'm trying to get some sizzling here, Google food style. Mmm. So good. And beef and rice, that's all you need. Savages, absolute savages. I'm telling you everybody, the best experiences I have had in Japan so far is not on the fancy restaurants. This one right here was just awesome. A complete chaos because my family loves beef, but um, what an awesome restaurant, man. And reasonably priced. Nice, simple restaurant, straight, all about the food. That was absolutely delicious. Little hole on the wall restaurants like this are just awesome. But after having all this delicious food, we wanted to do some sightseeing. And our very first stop was Nara, where they have deers that bow to you all the time. Right now, we're heading to Nara. It's gonna be a nice quick pit stop, but very enjoyable. The only issue was that getting here was a little bit confusing, everybody. The train stations, if you don't understand the language, can be quite complicated. But nevertheless, we got on the right train and we're heading to Nara and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> This park belonged to them, everybody. What's up, dude? She's like, we got the food for the venom. It's pretty cool, everybody. They stand still, you can feed them, give them the cookies. I gotta say, everybody, that is a very cool experience. They're all chilled, they bow to you. Even if you don't have the food, they come close to you to see if you have food, but they're very relaxed. This park is a must and you should definitely visit. Just be real careful with the deers though, because a lot of them have fleas and you don't want to get those on you. But there's one more location I wanted to visit before continue the eating spree. And that would be the monkey park. But the problem is getting there. The climb to the top to see the monkeys is insane. We finally made it on top of the mountains. That was not easy. But I gotta say, this is pretty cool, check it out. The humans are the one caged up. The monkeys are all free and loose. And here you get to buy some food and give it to them. Look at that baby one. Look at the baby. That was tough. Oh, he won it. That boy is happy, everybody. You got a nice view of Kyoto over here. Wow. All right. It was worth the walk. This is pretty cool, everybody. If you're willing to put the work, you're willing to see the monkeys. They run around like crazy, having a good time, but most importantly, they're looking for food. If you give them food, they'll be happy. But the view over here is beautiful. The monkey park is pretty cool, everybody, but you gotta remember one thing. What comes up must come down. And going down the mountain is a lot worse than going up. <sighs> Let's do this. I can tell you from experience, when you put a little bit of effort, those things will be extremely memorable. That monkey park was awesome. We made it to the bottom of the mountain, everybody. That was not easy. That made me tired. My caps are burning. So to refuel myself from the whole day of cardio, I decided to have one of the classics in Japan, and that would be ramen. This ramen shop is quite traditional, nothing fancy, and we all know the best places are these. Very traditional, and we order a bunch of good things. We got some gyoza, shoyu ramen, even a ham cutlet that looked really good, but I'm excited. Here, I decided to order quite a few things, and the first thing that arrived was kimchi. 
Mm. Good kimchi. We got some gyoza. Mm. It's nice and light. Love the crispiness on the bottom, as you can see right here. Inside is extremely juicy, delicious. These quick bites were okay, but what I was really looking forward to was this. Show you ramen. Wow, take a look at my ramen. Are you kidding me? Some cabbage on the top. I got a lot of pork over here. Got a perfect egg. Okay, I gotta attack the ramen. That's gonna be the perfect bite right there. Mm. It's very light. One of the options was to be extra fatty or light on fat. I went light on fat because sometimes when you eat ramen, it can be very, very rich. Perfect combination. This is a delicious ramen. You don't want to try one of these eggs right here. Mm. The eggs are just different in Japan. That's amazing, everybody. Amazing. That ramen was incredible, everybody. Yep, this was a delicious ramen. Unlike tonkatsu ramen, this one is not as rich. Shoyu ramen, I feel like you can eat it at any time. However, our next one is even more traditional than this. They make you take your shoes off and they give you these numbers and we're gonna order omo rice. Not really the omo rice I was expecting, but it's egg and rice. My omo rice arrived. Yes. It might come to you as a surprise, but not every amu rice looks like kichi kichi amu rice. That man has mastered his craft because this one has nothing to do with presentation. It's all about the taste. Okay, I'm so excited. Looks like they put the demi glaze sauce right on top. They give you also a little bit of katsu. Yeah. Mm. It's very good. They make it with ketchup for yeah. sure. Very light in flavor. Japanese people don't put a lot of salt. Mm, this is amazing. <laughs> yep, as I expected, they concentrate 100% on flavor. It was absolutely delicious. But my wife decided to go in a different direction and ordered this. It was an egg on top and some katsu on the bottom. She loved it, but my kids wanted more ramen, so they went for it. Overall, this was an incredible restaurant with some awesome dishes. And the fact that you're able to sit on the floor and enjoy, I knew it was not a tourist trap. Very traditional, very delicious. An overall awesome experience. They focus 100% on the flavor of the food, not the fancy presentation. Same goes for our next location. We are trying to find a good location to eat. There seems to be a very interesting street over here. Omoide Yokocho. Oh, let's give it a try. I have small shops everywhere. Just gotta find a good one. We're gonna find a spot to eat, everybody. This guy seems friendly. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Miami Vice, everybody. What's going on? I'm not gonna lie, he made me a little bit scared. But once I noticed he was just being extremely friendly, there was no other place I wanted to eat more than here. They had a large selection of skewers. Each one looks better than the next. And by the way, yakitori is beer food. So you gotta make sure you enjoy with a cold one. And my first one might not be for everyone. Hey, there's a heart. Chicken heart. Mm. One of my favorite things to eat, everybody, chicken heart. Can't eat too much of it because it has a lot of cholesterol, but damn, it's good. Damn, it's good. If you've never had chicken heart, you must give it a try. I know it might look intimidating for most people, but the flavor is not gamey at all, and you will like it if you try it. Next up, we got a Frankfurt sausage. That's what they call it here. Mm, 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 mm. This one was delicious, but what made it special was the char and the yakitori sauce, which is tangy and slightly sweet. The next one was straight up chicken, which is what yakitori stands for. Yakitori. Mm, mm. Straight off the grill is amazing. That was good, but there are so many other options. It's a tight spot, but it's an awesome spot. That was an incredible experience, everybody. 10 out of 10, the guy is yelling at you, having a good time, you're drinking some beer, eating some yakitori, you can't go wrong with that. That was amazing, amazing. Yep, every single skewer was awesome. Now this is street food, unlike the next location we're gonna go. Because if you ever open up Instagram and you've seen pancakes, you've seen these. And I said I had to try it. And I was hoping that it was gonna be as good as it looked, or maybe even better. It was actually difficult to get a reservation in this place because these pancakes are so popular. So yeah, if you wake up early here in Japan and you are an early person, most shops will be closed. You definitely want to wake up a little bit later and enjoy the night life. 
a lot of food, a lot of great things, but most importantly, we gotta try these pancakes now. And this is how they are made. They first beat a lot of eggs, and it becomes extremely fluffy, and they cook it nice and slow. Using a temperature gun ensures that they will cook it to perfection. But I gotta be honest with you, it takes a long time to cook them all, because in the end, this is what you're left with. They give you some syrup as well. They look very, very fluffy. Super fluffy pancakes, huh? Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see. Wow, super fluffy. They give you a generous amount of butter. Huh? Oh, that is not maple syrup, everybody. I thought it was gonna be maple syrup. Oh no, I, I think what we're, I was expecting something else, something similar to American pancake, and that is not it. It's very eggy. They look very pretty. Oh. 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 That one is not worth the hype, everybody. Not what we expected. We wanted some good pancakes, but just it wasn't our thing. After those pancakes, I needed a quick break, and I decided to visit the Osaka Castle. This place feels like you're in a movie set. Everything is perfect, it is obviously beautiful, and what you would expect to see when you're visiting Japan. They even have some live performance for you. I could do that too, everybody. As after that long walk on the castle, we started to get a little hungry. So onto the streets we had to find some good food. What's really interesting here in Japan are these things that they showcase in every restaurant. So believe me when I tell you, that is exactly what it's gonna look like when you get yours. Same things with the pancake, same things with the rice, tuna, whatever it might be. And obviously it's fake, but it's a perfect fake. At least to me, this is the best way to present your menu. So this restaurant is quite unique. They have Wagyu, but they also bread it first, and then you're supposed to finish them off in a little pot where they heat it up. It's actually a chain here in Japan, and I'm excited to try it. That's the heating pot that you're supposed to finish your preferred doneness. My wife here, she ordered the filet mignon, the tenderloin, and as you guys can see, it comes completely he actually called this one medium rare. I don't know about that. So what you do is put it right there and it will get a little bit more cooked. There you go. Mm. Is it the best way to have Wagyu? Maybe not, but it is a good experience. But honestly, what they give you to try next makes it 10 times better. There's one more thing that they give you here that I want to try. That will be an egg. So you grab the egg, you poke it like so. You grab the piece of this and dunk it. And you take a look at that. Mm. That's the way to do it. You definitely want to do the egg dunkage, everybody. 100% use the poached egg. It will be 10 times better. I also decided to order some Wagyu beef croquettes, and these were fantastic. But to make them better, guess what I did? I'm gonna grab my egg, I'm gonna grab this. Just gonna do some dunkage. Mm. But even though the steak is good, my favorite is this beef croquette. So that was a good experience, but not my favorite, everybody. I guess the beef wasn't that good of a quality since it's a, a chain, you know what I mean? There's no way that was a Wagyu. And we ordered the filet mignon and we also ordered the sirloin. If that was Wagyu, it was probably an A1. That's the thing in most cities. Some places are going to be great and others not so much. But our next one is the one that surprised me the most because we decided to go ahead and take the bullet train and head over to Hakone. It was a long ride and even though I did eat some snacks on the bullet train, as soon as we arrived we were hungry and I saw a restaurant serving Wagyu beef and even though it didn't look the best, my family didn't care and wanted it. We found a Yakiniko restaurant where you are able to cook it yourself and we're going to give it a try. They have some Wagyu. We chose three things, lean wagyu, fatty wagyu, and also chicken. Yeah, we're gonna eat some chicken too. And my boys are gonna cook, not me. Should be an interesting experience. They give you two sauces. One is ponzu and the other one is tare. He's pouring tare right now. Yeah. Okay. Orange juice, let's see. Straight from concentrate. We got the lean wagyu right there. Yes. So we got a nice fatty wagyu right here. We're gonna let them practice first, and then he's gonna go ahead and cook the fatty because this takes more skill. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll see. We also got some kimchi. 
little bit of rice, a mm, bit of kimchi to go along with it. Mm -mm -mm. We got it. It's flavorful, but definitely want to dip it in the sauce. So as my boys were cooking and giving it to me, the last thing I wanted was to disappoint them and tell them it was terrible. This is what I like to call fake Wagyu. By no means is it Kobe beef, but they are charging you like it was. It is a 100% tourist trap. But when my boys were cooking, that was the last thing I was going to tell them. So they kept on going. Here's the chicken getting ready. Chicken not that tender, but chicken good. That was the perfect description of a tourist trap. Expensive, bad quality, and totally different than my previous experience. Unlike the little hole on the wall I had previously, which mainly focused on the quality of beef, this one focused more on your experience versus the food. So overall, my top restaurants in Japan are the ones that are most simple. These will always give you the best experience, and it will not cost you an arm and a leg. But there's one restaurant that you must experience if you go to Japan, and that would be Conveyor Belt Sushi. That was my next stop. Oh, you can eat conveyor belt sushi. <laughs> that might not be a good thing for them. Okay, so here I guess you pick whatever you want. I'm gonna order salmon, hamburger steak, tuna yuki, fatty tuna, mm. beef tongue. What? I gotta try that. Ohagi rice cake. Let's try this matcha thing here. Something different. Order. I already ordered a few. I'm gonna wait for my order to arrive. There are plates going around non-stop. You can just pick whatever one you want. But if you want a special order like I did, those come on the top. But I couldn't wait. And this tamagoyaki was first, which is basically Japanese-style omelette with some rice. Guess I'll put a little bit of soy sauce on top. Mmm. Mmm. That tasted pretty good. And the most interesting thing for me is this is how they charge you. There's a code on the bottom of the plate and that's how it adds up to your bill. But then the special orders started arriving. And this one, we got tuna, egg yolk, and scallions. I was looking forward to this one. Mm. Oh, what is that? Super creamy, very, very fishy. Man, this one's not my favorite, everybody. Now this one, they call it the hamburger sushi. It's literally hamburger with some mayo. Mm. It is phenomenal. And their raw salmon just looked terrible. A tiny bit of soy sauce to give it some color, but then... That was definitely not the best. But I was missing some wasabi, and this is what they give you. So I put a tiny bit on top and gave it a go. Mmm, very delicious. Oh, the fatty tuna. It looks very good. Let me go ahead and add a tiny bit of soy sauce on top. Hmm, this one is delicious, everybody. Bam! Seems nice and fresh. It's delicious. Beef tongue. If you ever had beef tongue, you know how good this is, everybody. I'm gonna put a little bit of soy sauce as well. Mm-hmm. I can like order 20 of those. Beef tongue is incredible. Yep, all of the savory ones was quite delicious. But it was time to try something sweet. This rice cake. That don't look like no rice. That looks like red bean. Ooh, it's kind of hard. Ooh. Oh, the rice is in the inside. Rice and beans, but as a, a dessert. Oh. Oh. That confirmed everything. I don't like the beans and the rice in the middle. If you ever had sweet rice, you know what that tastes like, but it's all mushed up together. And then the red bean as an outer coat, it's not good. But let's try the second one. This one looks a little bit different. I think it's matcha powder and I think it's matcha mochi. Oh, this one looks much more promising. I don't understand why matcha is so popular. Oh my God, I don't like it. It's sweet, it's gooey. But the matcha powder is just a weird flavor. Why is matcha so popular? I striked out on the desserts. Let's check out. Conveyor belt sushi, great experience. Not the best food, but it's fun, everybody, when your food arrives in a conveyor belt. It's something you should definitely try. And the best part is that they have this in the US now. However, if you really wanna experience Japan, I highly recommend going to the small restaurants. Those are the best. You will have best food, best service, and a memory that you can never forget. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.